Hi, I'm Martin Godfrey, inventor of the Woodrat and CEO of Woodrat Limited in the UK. Our last big movie was made 10 years ago. A lot has changed since then, so I want to bring you up to speed with what's new. The Woodrat may be beautiful, but it tells you nothing about itself. No fingers to go in and out of, and there's not even a scale on it. But its simplicity is what gives the Woodrat its capability. The Woodrat is well known for making virtually any joint in the book, but now I want to tell you what happened when we redesigned the guide rails. It allowed us to design in these T-slots, which means that as well as marking up the rail with cursor and pencil, you can place stops to control the position of the router. We have, over the years, by the way, kept the metrics of the whole machine very steady, as steady as we can, so that everything will retrofit as we get new parts. And even the newest guide rails will fit the oldest machines. OK, so let's make a haunched tenon. First, use a marking gauge to mark out the tenon. Select your router bit. The Woodrat high-speed steel half-inch bit is a good cutter to make tenons with, up to about 50 mil or two inches deep. Uh, put a dab of water and find the flat behind the cutting edge and give a couple of strokes on the outside of the bit to hone it sharp. We are very pleased to have found the muscle chuck quick change collet. That uses just an Allen key to tighten and release the bit without searching for the wrenches and dropping the bit in the sawdust and barking your knuckles. You could cut a tenon by simply cutting on this line and then switching off and finding the front line, drop the bit and cut to the front line. But this is a bit tedious for more than one tenon and there is a better way. The distance between the first and the second cut is a fixed distance and it depends on the two bits that you're using to cut the mortise and the tenon. Say we, we are using a 12.7 or half inch bit to cut a 10 millimeter tenon. That'll fit into the 10 millimeter mortise which we cut later. The distance that we move the cutter between the first and the second cuts is the width of the tenon plus the diameter of the bit that we are cutting the tenon with. Add the two together, 10 plus 12.7 millimeters is 22.7 mil. Now comes the clever bit. Instead of measuring it, we put a block of something that physically goes between the two positions that measures 22.7 across. I have made blocks in wood, but uh, wood shrinks and moves, as you well know. And so I've made this out of one inch square aluminium tube, and I've cut off a length of it and finished it with wet and dry on a flat surface to exactly 22.7 millimeters. Okay, so uh, if we put the block in between the router, the rod here, and the stop, and then take it out, we can come forward the exact width of the block. And got it right, the back blade should be exactly on the line. The block is exactly the right size. It's brought it forward exactly the right amount. Mark out the haunches on each end of the tenon. First one then the other by somersaulting the rail. That makes the haunches of equal length. Their actual length is not critical. Now place the mark on the rail under the bit and pick up the position of the haunch under the bit and mark it onto the measuring rod. We call this back marking. And the same for the other end of the rail, this time cartwheel the rail and make a second mark on the measuring rod. Now let's mark out the depth. I've got a mark where it needs to come and I'll draw the line across with a knife 
and put the wood in, lift it up underneath so that it sounds, put your fingers behind the fence, thumb goes over the top and tighten in and then it's snug and there's no rattle in the bar. The whole business of rattle in the bar was a nonsense. It, uh, it's so simply taken out just by putting it in properly. Oh, the other thing is, underneath here we've got the raising plate in blue HDF, hard density fibre board, and that allows us to drop the cutter fully down so that you get a two inch or 50 millimetre depth of cut. Now, raise the router and drop it onto the slat of eight millimeter acrylic to set the height of the haunch. That's eight millimeters. Lower the height limiting screw to limit the height of the router and pull out the acrylic. Place the bit on the back line and lock it down. Push the block against the stop on the router and lock off the guide rail stop. Now, at the beginning of this, we said that there was nothing in the machine to tell you what to do and how to go about things. But now we've pinpointed all the different positions that we need. So we've got the block, which gives us the back position for the cut on the back of the tenon. And then come forward when you take this out, that gives you the front of the tenon. And then there are two positions for the height, one for the full depth of the cut for the tenon and then raised up for the haunch. And the positions of the haunches are given by, on this side here, the, um, the cursor against the marks that we made there. And then when we turn it over, we'll get to the other mark. So we're pinned completely and we can repeat things ad infinitum. Switch on and cut the first cut. The back cut going clockwise round the rail, as you should to avoid breakout. Release the star knob, take out the block and gently come forward to the stop and lock it off again. Run the front cut. Release the router again and raise it to the height stop. Go away on the left cut the haunch. The first cut is a trim cut and then you can put the cursor exactly on the mark and come forward and back. And that's the first tenon done. Cartwheel the rail to do the other end and you can leave the height of the haunch at haunch height. A trim cut the rail end at haunch height. Then find the haunch position on the measuring rod and cut the full haunch. Drop the bit to full depth and cut the front of the tenon going clockwise. One rail with haunch tenons. Charlie Chaplin used to say, beat it while your boots are good. But if you're still with me, I'd just like to show you how to make a twin tenon. It'll only take a couple of minutes.
That's all, folks. Whew. You know, Kevin, I'm really envious of these guys because they, they take the machine and they go away and, and make things with it. And I'm stuck here doing the marketing.